right. Woo, I'm telling you what, uh, the Lord is in the house and he's, he's ready to do some incredible things. And uh, some fantastic people, Evangelist uh, Milton Martin Jr. is here along with his son, Evangelist Josh Martin. I can't wait to talk to these guys because they, they are pumped up. Uh, Tara Props from uh, Remnant Church. We've got the Remnant Church worship team here. It's going to be a, a marvelous time uh, to just let the Lord have his way and do ministry. Uh, <clears throat> the word of the Lord today is from Psalm 85, 6 and 7. Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Well, it was only just a few days ago that uh, I was uh, in Brevard, North Carolina. And uh, I, I'd, I'd been very sick. Wasn't sure I was going to be able to get up that mountain. But in my sickness, God began to give me strength about halfway up. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I'd been, I'd been severely sick for several days. And then God began to speak to me about brokenness. And he, he, he reminded me of an old football play one many, many years ago that I was playing in. And it was a broken play that I broke loose on and scored the winning touchdown. And God used that and he said to me, Son, you'll speak tonight to many broken and shattered lives. There are a lot of young people uh, at, the, at the Job Corps there in Pisgah Forest, North Carolina. I made my way there and I used that as my introduction because you see, these kids have been put out of their homes because of rebellion and other things. And uh, this is one of the last straws for them. They get to come to the Job Corps. They're trained in a particular business. And then they are uh, uh, educated to get their GED. And I said to them, you know, you may think that your mother doesn't like you or hates you or your father hates you or other ones because you have been put here this way. But I got news for you. They love you. You may think that uh, because you didn't get that football scholarship and other things that took place because of your problems, you think that you're going to blame other people. But you see, I understand the brokenheartedness. I understand the shattered lives. That's what happened to me as I began to, to run with the wrong crowd and end up being a 10-year alcoholic. But God, but God restored what the canker worm took away. You understand what I'm saying? And I said, he's here to heal you tonight. And the Lord said, cast the net, son. I cast the net. And those little teenagers, out of 40 of them, 17 came forward to receive Christ as their personal Savior. You see what I'm saying? God is in the healing business, the delivering business, the touching business, the salvation business. We're going to see him do mighty and powerful things tonight. Well, let's break away and have remnant church worship team. They're going to sing the joy of the Lord. Praise the Lord. My heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I dance, in the shadows I see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Though I cannot see you with my eyes, let faith arise to you. Though I cannot feel your hand in mine, let faith arise to you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. How you shine with glory, Lord of light, let pale alive in you. In your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. And there's strength when I say,
darkness comes my way you are the shield around me always you remain my courage in my fight i hear you call my name in jesus i am coming walking on the waves and reaching for your light the joy of I'm here to tell you, thank y'all so much. Man, that was very powerful. And if there's anything that we need, it's, it's the joy of the Lord. Amen. And there's no way to fake that thing. It's, it's, it's really got to be real and in you where you've experienced uh, the power of the risen Christ forgiving you of your sins and coming into your life. As we proceed on uh, in tonight, I, I pray that you will begin to inspect your own hearts and decide, am I? Uh, a follower of the Lamb of God. Inspect yourself to make sure. And hopefully by the end, if you're not sure, we want to we want to pray with you and give you that opportunity to know Jesus. Well, anyway, I want to welcome now uh, Evangelist uh, Milton Martin, and of course Evangelist Josh Martin, his son. Hey, yeah. get, bless you guys. Thank y'all so much for yeah. being here. Here, you're good. Hey, yeah. So uh, I understand that uh, that uh, you guys are in a tent meeting right now, or Brother, we're going into our eight weeks of Holy eight Ghost, weeks. Holy Ghost and Fire, Soul Winning Miracle Healing Revival, Ooh. brother. Yes. Oh, well, let's just talk about that. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, what's been going on? Tell us some of the stories, maybe that are Amen. happening there. Well, we, uh, I, I'm a revivalist. Okay. That some people say I'm more of a revivalist than I am an evangelist, but they work I hand in glove, Me right? Sure. And a revivalist is a person who looks for the old wells that were dug Ooh. years, centuries ago by great men. My people came out of Virginia by way of Spartanburg and uh, then on down into uh, North Georgia okay. by way of South Carolina. Wow. But we got to looking at uh, a book on fire in the Carolinas. And right from North Carolina, yeah, South Carolina, yeah. and I, I uh, the the Ca G B Cash well went to Azusa Street in 1907 and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and began to preach not only sanctification, uh, like Wesley preached, mm -hmm. but he preached the baptism of the Holy Ghost and he came down into where we are now, Iva, on into North Georgia. And see, I didn't know when God sent me my first revival was in Tocoa, Georgia, Tocoa. where the 101st Airborne Division was trained on Mount Curie for the D-Day invasion. Wow. But see, Oral Roberts had been there in 42, and I ended up there in 81 and didn't know it. So, Reen, I'm telling this is because every time I turn around without knowing it over the last 41 years, I'm ending up in a place where an old well was oh, well. dug. See, Oral went to Tacoa, Georgia, looking for the God of miracles. Mm. And when a motor block fell off a, a, off a table on, on one of his deacon's feet and smashed it flat, they called for Pastor Oral Roberts of, of the PH Church. When he got over there, the foot was flat, bleeding, and he just reached over and said, Jesus, heal him. And all of a sudden, the man's foot just pumped up. It's history. Yeah. And he just danced all out into the street. <laughs> and the deacon said to him, Oral, can you do this, do this all the time? He said, he said, no, I'm just as surprised as you are, but I've been looking for the God of miracles. Wow. And he said, if you could do this, 
uh, when God anointed you often, you could bring one of the greatest revivals to the world that had ever been, and now it's history. My point is, is yeah. that G.B. Cashwell left West Union, South Carolina, mm -hmm. came into Coa, went back to Anderson, South Carolina, went down into where we are now in Iva. I'm in an old well yeah. of revival, digging out. Remember Ooh. when Abraham dug wells, dug wells, and then when he and when Isaac came along, he redug the wells that Abraham had dug. So that's what we're in the process in this Joel move of God worldwide is going back to our biblical New Testament, come on, Pentecostal. I'm not talking about denomination. I'm talking about an experience with Jesus the baptizer and the Holy Ghost and fire that sanctifies. And we're going back to that to redig these wells, the wells that Wesley dug, the, Wesley, the wells that George Whitfield dug, the, the wells that Billy Sunday, and, and I could just keep going yes, on and on. Could. So that's where we are now. And, and the miracles have been tremendous. Let me tell you one that yeah. helped get it, put, a, put that meeting on the map when we started there in May. I, one night after I preached, because when I preach, the gifts of the Spirit begin to move in the altar call. Here's the way we do. I preach the Word, the Spirit draws, we go to the altar, we all do business with God according to Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. <laughs> Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord from the book of Timothy, right? So we get our hearts right with God so that God is free to move. We get all of the blockages uh, of sin, backsliding, uh, mistakes, you name it. Yes. Things that would hinder and grieve the Holy Spirit. And then we call the people to altar to uh, receive miracles of the Lord. Well, one night... It's, we, we tape everything, but one night I said, I see Anderson Hospital, never been there in my life. I said, I see Anderson Hospital. I, see, I said, I see a room like third floor or room three or something like that with a Mr. Allen. Well, Lou Dez Belk, that's from the area, her husband was a great preacher. He's with Jesus now. Mm. And she went to the Anderson County Hospital the next day and found Mr. Allen in room 3305 or 3050 or something like that. And he was on life support. Wow. He was instantly healed and within weeks was out of that hospital off life support at home. And <laughs> Ooh, to Jesus yeah, be all the glory. Be glory. But yeah. he said that if we went forth and preached the word, he said, and if they repent and Amen. are baptized, they'd be saved, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Yeah. In my name, you'll cast out devils. In yeah. my name, you'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. In my name, you'll take up serpents. Now, he's not talking about snakes. We don't handle snakes. I've got a shotgun for snakes. Yeah. Oh. Amen. Really? Listen. <laughs> but he said, he said, and then they went everywhere, Mark 16, 15 through 20, preaching the preaching word, them. the Lord working with them, confirming the word that they preached with signs following. Sir, if it wouldn't have hadn't have been for God to have anointed you and I and my son and people for, oh, since Lord. Jesus' days with the power yeah. of God to draw people to Jesus, to meet the needs in their life by the power of the Holy yes. Spirit. He said he could do nothing without the he power. He right. said without the Father, John 5, I yeah. can do nothing. Mm. And you think about this. Jesus never worked a miracle until he went down into the River Jordan. The Holy Ghost yeah. fell on him in the form of a dove, and God hollered from heaven, Hey, I'm pleased with this. Yeah. This is my beloved Son yeah. in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. And so we can't, we can't do anything. Jesus commanded them that they stay, go to the upper room until they were endued with power oh, from on high. Yeah. He commanded them. It's not a suggestion. Yeah. It, is a, it command. is a command. If we're going to be like Jesus, finish this work before the rapture of the church. We're <sighs> going to have to have the fire the baptized fire, power man. of the Holy Ghost. Whew. Forgive me for talking Hallelujah. too long, no, but no. I'm excited. This is what we're about. We, yeah. yeah, when you're on a roll, let's roll. I see the Lord yes, on you. Yeah. He stirred your heart. Now, what about you, Josh? You, you're right in the middle of it too, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Two weeks ago, I, uh, I took over the, the preaching part of the tent revival. Right. 
and not that God doesn't use me in the altar because, of course, that's what it's all about, is souls and seeing people touched by the power wow. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. But I have noticed that God has truly anointed me and with the gift of preaching. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Bible says that the, these signs shall follow them that believe. I, I preached last night on forgiveness. I believe that that is the key mm. that the church and that people deal with uh, that's, that's, that, that unlocks that unforgiving lock that keeps people from experiencing the, in the freedom of the Holy Spirit and it, and it keeps them from experiencing the, the, the freedom that comes with love, that freedom mm. that comes yes. with mm. Forgiveness. Yes. Jesus said, how can you expect to be forgiven if you, amen, don't forgive others? Right. And, it's in, and I believe more than ever that the church and that everyone needs to understand that forgiveness, no matter how bad you've been hurt, no matter how bad you've been wounded, no matter how bad you, you've been abused, no matter how bad it, things may have been happening to, in, in your life, you know, Satan didn't say that he came to give life. No, Satan uh, came to steal and kill and to destroy. Ahead, right. Jesus said, I've Go come ahead. to give life and life more in that abundantly. So I, I believe that, that in, in Iva, that there are, there's been so many wounded, so many abused people, and now they're experiencing the love of Christ. Yeah. See, God is love, yeah, right. and, he, and, and with love comes power, and with love comes freedom, yes. with love comes assurance of a Savior. Amen. So I'm excited about what God is doing there in such a mighty, mighty way, and I love preaching under that big tent. <laughs> I love having, there, see, we, see, we take the gospel to the people. Yeah. Mm, we don't. We don't. We don't wait. Amen. On the invitation. Come on now. If we waited on the invitation, sometimes the, the doors may not open for an invitation. So we take the gospel to the people, yeah. to the world, to the highways, to the Highway. hedges, yes. and say, "Come as you are." Right. We don't want to clean you up. That's Actually, God's yeah. job. <laughs> we want to get you saved. Hallelujah. Ooh. Delivered. Set free by the power of God, and and let God do the cleaning up. Let God do the yeah. restoration. Let yeah. God do His mighty, mighty work through Jesus. Wow, amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, amen and amen. Oh, I tell you what, He's got a touch of God on Him. Mm. Yes, He does. Yeah, he get rolling. You ain't Our crowds have tripled mm. since I let Him start preaching. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Since since I just backed off and let turn him loose. Of course, he's, his grandmother used to say he's going to run way by me, but I kept telling him, you better get started. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what is happening too, and this will be, some of the, this will be something that we've done for the first time. That hill above that tent. Yeah. yeah so I've been overseas, and I have never seen such devastation of humanity mm. that I've seen. I'm talking about literally hungry people. I'm talking about drunks just staggering around. And 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 we're just we're we're going after the tent revivals over up on the hill to 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 to, to knock on Daryl's doors to love on people. Yeah. People uh, kids with ankle monitors on little girls running around that they're they're not hardly off the breast themselves and they got babies that I'm just saying, and so we're starting a sidewalk Bible study at lunch, mm. and and we're going to have food, and we're going to do something with the kids, with the parents, the unemployed parents. Uh, so we're serious. We're putting oh, leather man. on the street. Yeah. To, that's where would Jesus oh, be okay. if yeah. Jesus were here in His flesh? You... He would not be at any church in Greenville, Amen. South Carolina, on Sunday morning. He would be where the destitute are, where the worst of the worst are, where the sickest are, where the oppressed. And so I, we went and got us a new tent. I've had one since 1993, mm -hmm. but we went and got another one. Because so, this is what I told Jensen Franklin's brother out of, he's with, with uh, he's a pastor's the uh, uh, Pine Valley Church of God in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I said to, to Jensen's brother-in-law, 
Larry Harrell and his sister Jennifer. I'm not waiting on these lazy preachers anymore to do something about the lost. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a tent and go where they are, find them and bring them Amen. to Jesus. Amen. Wow. And, and another one of Jensen Franklin's um, first cousins, uh, Katie Stone's uh, nephew, Jensen's first cousin, we, we are having five Alive revivals on Sunday nights where we go at 5 o'clock to any church. We went to Baptist. We went to Church of God. We went, went to interdenominational, the whole big healing miracle campaigns with Pastor Tracy Stone, and he pastors the Lawrenceville Church of God wow. in, in uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia, to take the miracle power of Man. Jesus to the people. Take it to the people. To you, the you people. Hang right there where you are. Now, you understand what he's talking about. He's talking about go. You know, that's what the Lord really told us to do, go, mm -hmm. not sit, go. Amen. And uh, so, well, I can't wait to get back and hear some more. We're going to break away again. For, stick with us. I'm telling you, God's just, he's, the rumblings are starting. You can feel the rumblings taking place. Uh, Remnant amen. Church worship team, great are you, Lord.
listen to me very carefully, because uh, there's like there's like waves and waves of the Spirit of God yes. uh, moving, uh, just moving, incubating. And I know that if you at home sense it in your heart, that's the Spirit of God, the power of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that loves you, cares about you, your shattered life, your dreams that have been just like sand through your fingers. But God is wanting to restore what the canker worm has taken from you. God wants to make sure that you fall in love with his son. I want you to think about these things because this is the answer to be born again from above, that the Spirit of God comes and takes control of you and you become just this incredible person who just loves Jesus with all your heart. Love the Father and love your neighbors yourself. That's what we're talking about tonight. Let me ask you a question. If you stood before God and, and, and God were to say, why should I allow you into my kingdom, what would you say? I mean, do you really have an answer? You know, it's, it, it's not by being a member of a church, although that's good. It's not through baptism, although that's good, and we're to do it, first step of obedience. But it is having a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God. Maybe you would just like to reach out and say, that's what I need. I want my name written in that book of life. Revelation 2015, I need my name written in that book of life. Would you just pray, say, Father... Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. I come to you as a needy person right now. I open my heart. Come in, Jesus, and save my soul and write my name in that book of life. That's it. Did you pray that? Call, call the prayer partners in here. Let them know. We want to rejoice with you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, and I can tell that, Josh, my friend, you have been on a journey, and the Lord has just taken you, and he's elevated you to the place because you've had to, usually when that happens, there have been storms in a person's life. Uh, in, in the journey, there have been some sandpaper and some little chiseling going on because we have to cut loose of certain things. But everything is for the purpose and for the season that he brings you into. And you know that. Tell us a little bit about that. Years ago, um, when God had called me to preach, uh, at the young age of 20 years old, I uh, started preaching and... I I wasn't prepared for what comes with mm. the anointing. You know, the greater the crushing, mm. the greater the anointing. Oh, you That's right. The greater the press, the greater the promise. Mm. Oh, I want you okay. to uh, everyone to understand that this walk is not easy. Jesus never said it would be easy, but he did say he'd go with us to That's the right. end. That's right. And when I started preaching, I was full-time preaching the gospel everywhere. I, 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 was, I wasn't, to, you know, to where um, I was prepared for what was to come. And a tragedy happened. A betrayal in my life happened mm. with my spouse, and I was devastated. I was I was I was doing God's will. I was preaching full time, and then I then I, this happens, and I, I I'm in the middle of of doing what God had called me to do, and I'm thinking my life is over, my life is shattered, mm. and from that. I spiraled out of control yeah. and went from the top, if you will, to the bottom, to the lowest oh, point, and for years struggled Jesus. and tried to find everything to fill that void, to fill out everything, yeah. to fill that, to, to numb that pain mm -hmm. that only Jesus could feel. You see, God mm -hmm. desires relationship with us mm -hmm. so much. He's a God of relationship. Jesus is a, a Jesus of a, a savior of relationship. And what I went through I, I, I tried everything. Mm. Now, I mean, use your imagination. I, I tried everything. And at the point of death so many times, of overdoses, so many times of, mm. of, of being just, I mean, I tried everything. And I, I was crushed and I, was sh I had a shattered life. And it wasn't until I said, 
I said, Lord, you've, you've got to do something. I can't continue to live like this. I, I, I don't care about nothing else. I, I, I need you to help me, to deliver me, to set me free. And he reached down. This, and it wasn't an easy oh, process. I got you. But I got you. Jesus reached down and he said, I got you. I'm, I, I, I got you covered. I, I love you no matter what you've done, no matter how far you've been, no matter what has happened. I love you. I yes. forgive you. I set you free right yes. now. And I was set free. Amen. And then I took what I had experienced because the Lord let me go through that. He kept me covered. He didn't let me die so that I may now relate to the world say, to say I'm not, I don't have a religion. I have relationship yeah, come on now. and yeah. I, I am a product of the redeeming, renewing, Ooh. amen, refreshing Glory. power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus' love. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I Amen. feel it. Yeah, man. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got the fire on him. Amen. Yes, he does. Yeah, and I know that blesses your heart to hear that. Yes, yes. Yeah, those are those uh, dark nights in prayer. Those are those uh, yes. couch soaked tears. Right. Yeah, those are those exactly. places that you go that you feel like what what there's no place to go exactly. but to him. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, who can who can who can do it? Exactly. And so we cry out day and night for those type of things to happen. And I know that there are many out there that are doing the same thing. When we hear Josh's testimony, what he's saying to us is, "Don't give up. There's hope. Mm -hmm, I'm right. telling you, d just don't give up. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, come on, keep throwing the lifeline out there. Is what what he's saying. Amen. And I've learned that if you'll just mix the prayer, mix the tears, and mix the fasting, it, it moves mm -hmm. all of heaven. Mm -hmm. And so, praise God, man. Thank Amen. you so much Absolutely. for sharing that, sharing that with us. Absolutely. Very very powerful. Now. Uh, I know we were talking earlier about how God has just placed so many generals uh, in the areas of, of ministry. Many of them are gone now. They're not exactly. here. Exactly. And we need some of that baton being passed on to the next generation and even the next generation Absolutely. who can carry the blood-stained banner into the highways mm -hmm. and byways compelling people to come to Jesus. You look at the statistics, man of God, churches closing mm. faster than they're being organized nationwide um, and you think about how now that nations are sending us missionaries yeah. and I, I don't know that the crowd knows this this is a statistical fact that the United States of America with 24 hour a day AM FM radio religion television yeah. all kind of yeah. media all a bumper sticker going down the road, prepare to meet your God, hell is real. It just goes on and on, 24 hours a day, every way you can imagine, and goes to hell faster than in any time in the history of this nation and the fact that they say that we're between the fourth and fifth largest unsaved people group on the face of the earth. Boy, what an end uh, All right, so here I am a revivalist, you're an evangelist, I'm an evangelist, and, and there's many watching pastors saying, what do we do? Yeah. So being a person of, of, of history, wanting to say, okay, what did Wesley do after he, his heart grew strangely warm after he was saved? Mm -hmm. he, came to Fort, he came to be with General Oglethorpe down in Savannah, Georgia mm -hmm. to save the Indians, but on the way back to, to London, he said, I came to save the Indians, but who's going to save me? He was lost. He was religious, but he was lost. Ooh. He knew the word, but he did not have the Holy Spirit. He wasn't born again. So uh, I look at the lives of these people that, that shook continents, and I, look, I, I begin to study about why were there such an emphasis at the end of the 1800s from men, and I wrote this down, like D.L. Moody, A.B. Simpson, F.B. Meyer, Charles Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, mm -hmm. R.A. Torrey. Why did they place such an emphasis on being sanctified, being set apart by the Holy Spirit, and being filled with the Book of Acts experience of the baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost? And here's what I found out in study. They thought Jesus was going to come 
-hmm. at the, at, in 1900 or shortly after. So they said, well, what are we going to have to have to do what the first century church did mm -hmm. to win the multitudes to Jesus before Jesus comes? Or we're going to have their blood on mm -hmm. our hands mm -hmm. because we're going to be responsible for from going to hell because we did not preach the word to them. Mm -hmm. Do you know that the first century church is the only church that ever won its generation to Jesus? Wow. Since that time, we've got further and further and further behind. Even whole continents that used to be Christian are now Muslim Amen. or Hindu or Buddhist. We love them. Amen. But Jesus is the only way. He's the truth and he's the life. So I've come to this conclusion that we are going to have to get under a burden to preach one more time being holy people and being spirit-filled, spirit-led, spirit-guided, spirit-controlled. Mm. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many, not everybody, but for mm. as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So, so I wanted to show you something oh, yeah, from, God's, yeah. from God's generals yeah. here, and God's one of generals. them was Billy Graham. When mm. I was a little boy, lost and on my way to hell, I wanted to be a preacher yeah. like Billy Graham. Yeah. So this is Billy's, Graham's experience with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. It'll take just a second. He said in October 1946, Billy heard a minister by the name of Stephen Alford that was preaching in Wales. And his text was Ephesians 5, 18. Mm -hmm. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Hearing this message, Billy began a struggle to obtain the infilling of the Holy Spirit and his anointing on his ministry. At the end of the service, Billy approached Alford and asked, Mr. Alford, I just want to ask this question. Why didn't you give an invitation? I would have been the first one to come forward to be filled. You spoke of something I don't have. He was saved. He had the sealing of the Holy Spirit, but he did not have the empowering baptism of the Holy Spirit as spoke of in Acts 1.8 and Acts 2.4. He said, I want the fullness of the Spirit of, in my life too. Listen to this. Of meeting Alfred, Billy said, I was seeking for more of God in my life. I felt there was a man who could help me. He had a dynamic, a thrill, and an exhilaration about him I wanted to capture. Billy and Alfred agreed to meet, and they spent time studying. Lord, I don't want to go on without this anointing. You've given my brother Alfred. Billy didn't receive the blessing, for, uh, however, for his sermon that night was ordinary, not the Welch kind of preaching uh, he, like Evans Roberts and the Welch Robin. The two men met again real quickly, again the next day, and Alford began teaching about being filled with the Holy Ghost and how once he had to be broken uh, as Paul was when he proclaimed, I've been crucified with Christ. Before he could receive this infilling, he taught Billy that where the Spirit of the Lord is over the life, there's liberty, there's release, the sublime freedom <coughs> of complete submission of oneself in a continuous state of surrender to the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit. Billy's response was, Stephen, I see it. That's what I want. About mid-afternoon, the men prayed together. Alfred described what happened as they prayed. All heaven broke loose in that dreary little room. I was like Jacob laying hold of God and crying, Lord, I will not let you go except you bless me. Billy described how he exclaimed after the prayer, my heart is so flooded with the Holy Spirit. I have it. I'm filled. I'm filled. This is the turning point of my life. This will revolutionize my ministry. The effects were immediate. According to Alford, that night at the Kentucky camp meetings, wait a minute, I, I missed a page. Wait this is so important. It's so important. Uh, the Welch listeners jammed the aisles to hear him preach after he was Holy Ghost baptized. Practically the entire audience rushed forward. Alford told his father that evening, Dad, something has happened to Billy Graham. The world is going to hear about this man. He's going to make his mark in history, all because of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Wow. Amen. You understand that we all need the fullness. Filled of the and Spirit. it's a continuous. Yes, filling. continually. It just doesn't. It just it's constantly 
because God you, Jesus. is Amen. doing something in Amen. this day and age in us. Amen. And we need to just let him have oh, full reins of us. He's not looking for talents and abilities. Nope. He's looking for the availability of Amen. you. Will you open up and allow him in and take control in the surrendered life and the intimacy with Amen. the King of yes. Glory? Come yes. on, call us and let us know that you've, yes. re you've received this and you want yes. it, the salvation through Jesus Praise Christ, God. the blood of the Lamb of Calvary. Praise well, we're gonna, I'm God. waiting on your call. We're going to break away now with the Remnant Church worship team and brokenness aside. Amen. Praise God. I feel like I could run. If I let you down, cause all I know is how to run. Cause I am a sinner, if it's not a one thing, it's a You make it beautiful, you make it beautiful. 
uh, th this, this is your moment. It is a precious moment. It is a divine moment. This is the moment to connect it. And don't put it off. Don't wait any longer. This is, the, this is the time when the Spirit of God is moving in such a way you need to cast yourself before Him and say, God, I'm ready to take me and use me. Come on, some of you that used to be evangelists, used to be pastors, and you, you've gotten away. You're, you're somewhere else. It's not like it was when you first met Him. You're on fire. You can come mm. back. He's a God of the Amen. second chance, many chances. I, I, I'm pleading the case with you. The, these brothers here have come in. They're, they're lighting the fire of evangelism and revivalist. Come on, think about it. And if you don't know him, you need to know him today. I'm expecting calls. I'm expecting people back there to pray with you and then bring me the information so that we can pray for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Glory Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So the Lord um, has, has really done some very powerful thing in you guys' lives, and I can see it and sense it. And there's something about uh, how this uh, e excitement breeds excitement, joy, and unspeakable joy, peace that goes beyond understanding, and you guys have got it. And so what I like about you, though, is you're taking it to the people. Mm -hmm. yes, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. This is what's got to be done. Exactly. And I, I think you're, it's dead on right, because I keep saying at age of 71, I say one of the most lacking things uh, in, in the church house today is we've got in a lot of places a lot of religion and we don't have a fresh encounter of people who have had the encounter of being born again and the fullness of the Spirit of God mm -hmm. which ignites you on exactly. the inside. And you can't you cannot contain it. Right. You cannot hold it Absolutely. down. Your tongue has to brag on Jesus. It's got to. Exactly. So exactly. that's what's happened to y'all, and I'm pumped up about it. And I'm exactly. thankful that God has sent some warriors in here tonight. Thank God. <laughs> well, we're excited about what God's doing for these are the last days. Last days. The last of the last days. And I was thinking about how much Jesus the baptizer and the Holy Spirit wants to baptize believers with power so that they can go out and fulfill what he, the promise he made with legal terms. Mm. John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that's legal talk. This is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me, God, the works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works and greater than these works. shall ye do. Let me tell you an experience I had with Jensen Franklin's missions man, Hugh Skelton. Uh, he's he looks like he's 60, but he's almost 85. Maybe he's a little older. But we were in Brazil. We stayed with a little baker, uh, and, uh, and he had little short legs, but from here up, he was a normal guy, but he was a, a beautiful little man. He was a little Presbyterian guy. And he, he, he didn't understand Acts 1-8 being, you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be witnesses. Yeah. Now, see, a lot of groups have made the emphasis on the tongue, on speaking with tongues. Th that comes with it, but that's not the emphasis. The emphasis, you shall receive power, mm. the ability to reproduce Jesus where you're full of the Holy Spirit, and he testifies in you mm. of Jesus so that everybody will say, these people's been with Jesus. They take knowledge you've been with Jesus. But because the, that particular group didn't teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the divine evidence of speaking with other tongues, as Acts 2, 4, he, he's, uh, we were in a meeting, and they brought a little deaf and dumb girl to us, and instantly Jesus opened her deaf ears, and she spoke, hey, Southern English for the first time. I, <laughs> I'm a Southern boy. You know what I'm saying? And he began to shout all across the front and began to praise the Lord, and all of a sudden, there was a message came forth in, in, uh, in, the, in, in tongues with interpretation. And Leonardo just all of a sudden, he just began to shout back and forth across the front. And we said to him, why are you so excited? He said, because the Holy Spirit in that message in tongues, in 1 Corinthians 12, to one is given the gift of tongues, said, Leonardo, 
I love you. This is for you oh and your goodness. children <laughs> and all of them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Well, that's scripture from Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. That little baker got full of the Amen. Holy Ghost. The Presbyterian baker. Yes. <laughs> so we don't go out preaching denomination. We thank God for all the good any of them do. But Jesus wanted us to be one. And the Holy Spirit makes us one. It's in unity that we will win our world to Jesus. If the Holy Spirit comes and does his work, there'll be no denominational division. There'll be no cultural division, no racial division. Come on. Amen. Uh, th th yeah. He just makes us one, makes you one. in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Laser it's just focus. like this yeah. little lady call from, uh, called on the phone from Wilmington, North Carolina, and said, my daughter's kidneys have failed, and she's going to have to have a kidney transplant. We called from the altar service. I got, a new, I got two new things going, not only going with my sidewalk Bible um, study, but I've been calling people that want prayer from the altar service. I said, ma'am, we're on the phone. Amen. Put your daughter on the phone. Wow. And the lady texted back. I got it in this phone of mine. She said, I could feel her kidneys jumping in under my hands while you prayed. Ooh. She took her back to John Hopkins Hospital and the doctor said she's healed. Amen. Of the, Amen. <laughs> that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's not about Martins yeah. or you yeah, or right. Josh. That's, that's about right. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. It makes him real. Amen. Yeah. Makes him Amen. real, man. I'm telling you. Amen. You can sense when you begin to talk to people, pray for people, or talk to people. Me, I do a lot of the evangelistic work out in the streets, and I go out to begin uh -huh. to witness. And it is amazing because Jeremiah says in 5 and 14, shall I not make my words come out of your mouth That's like right. fire? Yes, right. yes. And you'll notice when you're speaking to somebody and you're giving them the truth about it, you can move the Roman road or any of that, but as long as you're That's delivering right. it like that and you watch the fire get on them, it ain't right. us. It's what the Lord promised. Exactly. Right. He promised. And the fire gets on them and bur Absolutely. burns that wood stubble and hay they believe in, in that religious Amen. spirit. And exactly. all of a sudden they want to know, what, well, what must I do to be right. saved? Right. Right. Exactly and, right. And, and then they get the truth. Well, do you know why Paul told Timothy that it would be dangerous in the last days? Because he said that the, there would ha they would have a form of godliness, of godliness yeah, but that. they would deny Deny God the power, power of that godliness. Power. You know what William Booth said of the Salvation Army before he died? He said, in the last of the last days, there would be, they'd preach a heaven without a hell. Mm -hmm. They yeah. would preach a relationship with Jesus with no holiness. They would teach, teach, teach about a Holy Spirit, but no power. Right. And we've seen it. That's why our world is in trouble. Your eyes are on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Got it on the wrong thing. My papa in the Lord, R.W. Shambach, went to a meeting overseas. He said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to find out who God here is. Bring the worst cases up here to the front, and we're going to pray in the name of Buddha. If they get healed, we'll serve Buddha. He said, if we pray in Muhammad's name and they get healed, we'll serve him. If they pray in the name of Hare, Hare Krishna, we'll serve him. If they'll pray in the name of any God and they're healed, we'll serve him. You know what? Pray in all of them. No healings. Pray in the name of Jesus. Bam. Deaf Amen. ears, blind God. eyes, cripples walking. That's Jesus. Amen. That's what Jesus does. Amen. Jesus. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Woo. The, the Lord's got the net cast. He, he, he's waiting on you. You understand? He, the, the, the net is out there. He wants to prove his love to you. He really does. That's why God sent Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a great party goes on when you come to know his son. Uh, you know, when you think about sending your son and then what we did to him, and then for those who will receive him, can you imagine the incredible joy on the Heavenly Father when they see that he didn't just send his son in vain, but they were, they were thousands, even millions who mm -hmm. came to know his son. Man, that is just so powerful <laughs> thought. You know, and that's why I love the streets. I love to go to the streets because most of them think that they got it because they do good. But once we overcome the good, we overcome that part mm -hmm. that's exactly. good and we show how Jesus does it. And it's like the light bulb comes on. Mm -hmm. And they, they say, how did I get that? Yeah. Exactly. And then you just explain to them and it'll look, 
we're going to pray. The prayer ain't going to save you, but if your heart, I'm telling you, if you, if you, if you want a transformation in your heart and cry for Amen. God will show up Amen. and change your life. Amen. Amen. Well, I want us to pray in a little bit for people to receive sanctification and got? receive 30? the fullness of the Holy Spirit. 30 seconds is what 30 we got. seconds. Well, Lord, let's Go do it. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. we claim the promise, the promise. of the Comforter. The you comforter. said you would not leave us orphaned. Yes, I yes, will yes. not leave you alone. And in the name Thank of Jesus, you, you said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Your Lord Peter's message was when they said, what must we do? And he said, repent and be baptized, yes. every one of you in the name of Jesus, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and your children, even as many Hallelujah. as the Lord our God shall call. Yes. Lord, fill them now with Thank the you, fire Lord. of the Holy Holy Ghost and make them a witness to Greenville and finish the work that Jimmy and Joanne Thompson started here in Greenville, South Carolina and all the world that's listening to this by live stream. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And everybody said, I receive him. I re